Yo, what's up guys? It's Noah here. Uh, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the two-game NFL slate on Sunday for the conference championship games. Uh, DraftKings putting out big contests this weekend um, for the two-game slate. Another millionaire maker, I do believe, uh, 3.5 million total prizes uh, with a million to first. So there is going to be you know, a lot of action Sunday, even though it is just a two-game slate. I did want to still cover this slate, uh, make content for it. So you know, in this video, specifically, we're going to go quarterback through tight end, go through each position and talk about you know what stands out to me, what I do like. Uh, taking a look at this slate on um, Thursday night. Probably going to post this video to YouTube um, probably sometime Friday night. Um, but I did want to get this video posted. I will be gone this weekend. I'll be traveling, so I wasn't able to make the content you know, later. Wanted to go ahead and get it done Thursday. Uh, but yeah, guys, we're going to talk through this slate, talk about what stands out to me, what I do like at each position. Before we get started with the breakdown, though, as always, please do uh, hit the like button down below if you do enjoy all this NFL content. Hit that subscribe button as well if you are new here. Um, if you have not yet, go check out the sponsor of the video, Price Picks. Uh, so Price Picks is a player prop based DFS site. It's very simple. You're just picking the over or the under on players' projections. If you have a lean, you know one way or the other. Uh, Price Picks they met, they have a ton of props up for these two uh, Sunday games. They have you know fantasy port projections posted both for you know offensive players and for defense and kickers as well. Um, so you can you know take over or under there. You can take a look at their player props. So receiving yards, passing yards rushing yards. I believe they did add a couple more stuff to their board. So they have um, they have pass attempts now. So you can bet on, you know, how many pass attempts a, a player has, a quarterback has, um, interceptions, tackles, sacks, you know, prospects has just about everything you can imagine. You know, if you're looking to get a little bit different, you know, in terms of your action, trying to, you know, find more ways to get action, you can definitely go play over on prospects. You can win up to 10 extra money over there. I um, just have to find two picks that you pair that you want to pair together or you can make up to five picks. Um, and again, you can win up to 10 extra money. If you guys are new and you have not yet, uh, go sign up for Prize Picks. Use code NOAH when you do, and Prize Picks will give you a 100% match on your first deposit up to $100 when you do sign up with my promo code. Uh, but yeah, guys, let's take a look at this slate. We're going to start off at the quarterback position. So our four options on Sunday are Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow, Matthew Stafford, and Jimmy Garoppolo. You know, I think quarterback... I mean, it's pretty straightforward this week. I think the quarterbacks, in terms of you know my ranking, I would probably rank them how they're priced, with Mahomes being my favorite, number one, Burrow second, Matthew Stafford third, and then Jimmy Garoppolo fourth. You know, Mahomes at 7,400, it's not like he's that much more expensive than the other quarterbacks on this slate. I think Mahomes is by far the best quarterback play. I mean, we saw, and so far just in the playoffs, I mean, he's been amazing. I mean, you look at the, the fantasy game log, 41 and 43 DK points. He's been throwing the ball a ton, been really efficient as well, over 378 passing yards in two straight games now. I mean, this is the game, you know, this is the, the premier game of these two games, in my opinion. I think this Cincinnati KC game has a lot more appeal to it. It has a 54 and a half total right now. Uh, the total in this game opened at 50 and a half, and it's been, it's been bet up to 54 and a half. So Vegas is expecting a lot of points scored here. Um, I think this game could definitely turn into a shootout when these teams did play during the regular season in Week 17. You know, the final score was 31-34. I think we could see a similar type of game on Sunday. Um, so I really like Mahomes here. He's for sure my favorite quarterback on this slate. I think Joe Burrow would be second for me. I mean, Joe Burrow, like he's been really good as well now. So far in the playoffs, or at least last week in the playoffs, we kind of saw we kind of saw them win. Um, you know basically off their defense. Um, it was a really low scoring game against Tennessee. Burrow uh, threw the ball 37 times, did throw for over 300 yards, but it, you know, didn't get into or didn't get it to the end zone any. No passing touchdowns for Burrow last week. You know, in this game where they're seven point dogs with a 54 total, like this just sets up as a typical Joe Burrow throw the ball like 40, 45 times type of game. Um, last time these teams played in week 17, I mean, Burrow had one of his best games of the season, 37 drafting points, threw the ball 39 times, had 446 yards and four touchdowns. Like, I think Burrow has just, you know, I don't want to say has as much upside as Mahomes, but I think he could definitely put up somewhat of a similar score to Mahomes. Um, I think Burrow is my second favorite quarterback for sure. You know, again, when you're looking for like quarterbacks to play in GPPs and you're looking for stacking options, it's kind of clear when you're playing Mahomes, when you play Burrow, I mean, you kind of know who you want to stack them with. So definitely like both those guys quite a bit. I think Matthew Stafford, kind of similar uh, similar to Joe Burrow. I just don't know if he has as much upside. Now, you know, Stafford was really good last week. I mean, his Tampa Bay was really efficient, had 366 yards on only, you know, 28 completions, had two touchdowns, over 30 drafting points for Matthew Stafford. I mean, I think it's 6,300. Like, he's for sure viable. He would still probably be my third favorite QB on the slate, um, especially because his pass catchers, you know, outside of Cooper Cup, I don't have a ton of confidence in uh, many of the other Rams pass catchers outside of Cup and maybe Odell. Uh, but I think Stafford is for, for sure in play on the slate. Jimmy Garoppolo is the one guy that, man, I just have a tough time going to. He just hasn't been that good. And we know this 49ers team, like, 
they're going to try and run the ball as much as possible. They want to keep this game low scoring. You know, I think the way the 49ers win this game is if it's like a defensive slugfest, if it's a really low scoring game, I don't think they're going to be able to win in like a shootout. Um, I just don't know if their offense is good enough. Garoppolo hasn't shown, you know, consistency, hasn't been able to move the ball down the field. Um, I think at 5,400, I mean, he's really cheap. Obviously on a two game slate, he is in play. But man, like I don't have a ton of confidence in Jimmy G. Um, if I was playing like one lineup on this slate, I definitely would not be going to Jimmy G. I think, you know, for sure, Mahomes and Burrow would be the two quarterbacks I'd be beside, deciding between with uh, Mahomes being my preferred of the two. Garoppolo, you know, he's, in my opinion, the fourth best QB on the slate, and he's probably a good ways down uh, below Mahomes, Stafford, and, and Burrow. Just not that much interest in Jimmy Garoppolo. Um, don't think I'm going to go there personally. So we can go ahead and move on to the running back position. And looking at running back, you got Joe Mixon at the top for 6,800. I mean, Joe Mixon, you know, the workload so far, it's been really good. The pass game usage has, you know, been way up for Joe Mixon, which we love to see. You know, on DraftKings with the scoring being full PPR, you want running backs that can catch four, five, six balls. And as of late, like Mixon's been getting those type of opportunities, been getting those targets, six, eight, five, and seven targets over their last four games. I'm pretty sure his snaps were like really, really good last week. I want to say he played like on almost 100% of the snaps, if I do believe. Yes, 70, 72% of the stats for uh, Joe Mixon last week. So, you know, he was on the field a you know, large majority of the game. He got 20 touches, 14 carries, 7 targets. I think we can expect a similar type of workload here for Mixon. I do worry a little bit about game script maybe getting negative for Mixon. Um, I don't think this is a game where the Bengals are going to have, like, a big lead. I think they're probably going to be playing from behind. But, again, with how much they've been, been involving Mixon in the passing game, that might really not even be that bad of a, you know, that might not be that bad because he's going to get, you know, six, seven, eight targets. So Mixon obviously in play on the slate. Eli Mitchell, uh, right now I have to pay attention to his status. He got a limited practice in Thursday. I would expect he plays. It's, you know, it's the playoffs. These guys are going to do whatever they can to be out there. Uh, but at least worth noting that Mitchell is questionable as of Thursday night when I'm making this video. Uh, but I would expect Mitchell to play. You know, so far this season, I mean, he's been a, a workhorse type running back. Ever since Raheem Mostert went down, like Mitchell's kind of taking control of this backfield. And you just look over their last five games, I believe he has at least 20 touches now in five straight games. Or actually make that seven straight games now with over 20 touches or 20 or more touches for, for Eli Mitchell. 5,900, I think this price point is pretty good for a guy that's going to probably get 18 to 20 touches. Now, I, I do worry a little bit about game script getting negative here for the 49ers. I thought last week was going to be a game against Green Bay on the road where you know, the 49ers would maybe get behind. Eli Mitchell may not get as much opportunity as we expect, but you know, it was, they were able to keep the game close and ultimately win. Eli Mitchell did get 20 touches. If they get behind, I do worry about Eli Mitchell maybe being phased out a little bit. He really uuh, succeeds when it's, you know, when the 49ers are playing with the lead and they can just, you know, run the clock and, and just run the ball as much as possible. Will they be able to do that on the road here against the against the Rams? A really good offense. You know, I think the Rams are going to be able to put up points here. Maybe game script gets negative um, and, and, you know, maybe they're playing from behind. They're forced to throw more. But still, with the, the touches that Eli Mitchell should get, you know, at 5,900, he does stand out as probably the second best running back play on the slate. Uh, behind Joe Mixon. Then you got the Chiefs running back, CEH and Jarrett McKinnon. So last week, it was kind of Jarrett McKinnon's backfield. He played way more than CEH did, even with CEH back. Uh, McKinnon still led the backfield in snaps, and he led the backfield in touches as well. Um, he saw 15 touches, 10 carries, and five uh, receptions, had seven targets. Um, last week, he did play on 70% of the snaps, whereas uh, Clower Zerlera only played on 30% of the snaps. Uh, Daryl Williams was inactive last week. I don't know if Daryl Will Williams will be inactive for this or active for this game. Uh, we're going to have to pay attention to his status. You know, I, I don't think, like, even if Darrell Williams is able to play, like, I don't think he's going to be involved that much. I think McKinnon, McKinnon's really taking control of this Chiefs backfield, and I think he is their kind of lead running back right now. Um, you know, he's been explosive. He, when he's gotten touches, he's, you know, been really good. He's always been a really good pass-catching running back just throughout his career, and we've seen the Chiefs really use him a lot in the passing game. Last two games, six and seven targets, so... At 5,100, I do have some interest in Jarrett McKinnon. He is for sure my favorite Chiefs running back to go to. Um, I just think he's the guy that's going to probably get the most touches. At 5,100, especially with him being cheaper than Clyde Edwards-Alaire, I think McKinnon's the Chiefs running back I do like most. Hard to go to him, though, over Cam Akers. I know Cam Akers was you know really disappointing last week, and I had a lot of interest in Cam Akers on last week's slate. But the volume was there, and that's what we love to see. I mean, he got 27 freaking touches. I know he was really inefficient. I know he had some fumbles as well. But man, like 27 touches for Cam Akers, like he is clearly 
they're using him like a workhorse running back. Um, even in that playoff game against Arizona, I thought he might be s somewhat limited still, but like he still played on a ton of snaps against Arizona. Uh, the last two weeks for, for Cam Akers, he has played on 53% of the snaps in that Arizona game. And then last week against Tampa Bay, he played on 81% of the snaps. I mean, Sony Michelle was like barely involved. Now, after that second fumble for Akers, they did actually, you know, put Michelle in the game and Akers didn't play the rest of the game. It was, you know, I think they had like one more drive and Akers did not play in that last drive. I do worry a little bit about, you know, with the two fumbles last week, does Cam Akers come out here and just get like 25 touches again? There's a little uncertainty there, like, especially if he fumbles again, like if he comes out and fumbles like on the on the first drive or something, I mean, he could definitely get benched. I mean, the two fumbles almost cost him the, cost him the game last week. Um, it allowed Tampa Bay to come back. So that is the one worry this week with Cam Akers. But man, like he, just, he got 27 touches last week. He played on over 80% of the snaps. If we expect that type of workload for him again, I mean, a 5K, like he's just way too cheap. I know he was really inefficient last week, but that was, that was against a really tough Tampa Bay run defense. I think this is a better spot for Cam Akers. At 5K, I mean, he's one of my favorite running backs this week. Um, obviously, there's you know plenty of plays that running back can go mix in, Mitchell, McKinnon, Akers, but I really like Cam Akers at 5K. I don't think he's gonna just get like benched again. And, you know, if he fumbles again, then there's always a possibility. Um, but I still expect K Makers to be the starting running back and to you know get similar a similar workload heading into Sunday. Um, so I really like K Makers at 5K, and that's probably it for the running back position. I don't really see anything else I'd be going to. You know, in large field GPPs, if you're playing the Millie Maker and you want to take a shot on Sony Michelle, like in a scenario where Cam Akers does you know fumble again and, and he gets benched, I mean. Sony Michelle would obviously be a big benefit beneficiary in that scenario, um, but you're you're kind of banking on that to happen. I think for now, Cam Akers does have the the clear like the clear he's the clear lead back for this um, Rams team, and I think as long as you know he doesn't lose the ball again, fumble again, he's probably going to get a, a very heavy workload, which isn't going to you know allow for many oppor much opportunity for Sony Michelle. But again, it's a two game slate. We're trying to get different somehow. I think playing Sony Michelle and just hoping that maybe Akers doesn't get as many touches as he did last week. Maybe the fumbles last week, you know, cost him some opportunity this week. We'll have to see. Um, you could always do that in, in large field GBPs. But I think we really talked about the running back position. Let's go ahead and move on to wide receiver now. So at wide receiver, I mean, really all these top tier guys like Cooper Cup, Debo Samuel, Tyreek Hill, Jamar Chase, like all these guys are really good plays. I don't need to tell you that. It's a freaking two game slate. You know, Cooper Cup, you're, you're paying a little bit more for him than you are some of these other receivers. But man, like Cooper Cup's just been so freaking good this year. The volume has been insane. I mean, he's getting almost 10 targets a game. He's been scoring a ton of touchdowns. I mean, he's got double-digit DK points in every single game this season. Like, there's nothing negative to say about Cooper Cup here. It's just a matter of if you can fit him in or not. Um, the pricing on this slate is somewhat a little soft. You know, there's are there are guys that are definitely probably cheaper than they should be. So I think it you know probably is easy to get to Cooper Cup if you want to go that route. I do like some of these receivers, though, for cheaper. Like, Tyreek Hill's only 7 k Debo Samuel's, you know, only 7200 Like, you're paying, you're not having to pay as much for these guys. And I think these guys do have, you know, just as much upside as Cup and could easily outscore him. Now, obviously, you know, Cooper Cup's floor is insanely high just with how much volume he gets. But, like, we've seen Debo Samuel always, you know, break off long plays. It seems like he always scores a touchdown just about every single week. We know they're going to use him in the running game a ton. He's going to probably get, you know, 10, 12 carries to go along with the 5, 6, 7 targets that he gets. Um, so I definitely have some interest in Debo Samuel. Really like both uh, receivers, though, in the Cincinnati KC game, Tyreek Hill and Jamar Chase. You know, Tyreek Hill had that stretch of games where he was play playing really poorly, but last week he looked like, you know, vintage, Ty uh, vintage Tyreek, 11, tar or 11 catches on 13 targets, 150 receiving yards and a touchdown, 34 draftings points for Tyreek last week. Uh, pretty sure his snaps went back to normal last week, like he was on the field for a large majority of the snaps. Um, you know, he got injured in that Denver game during pregame warm-ups. Wasn't great in the um, Pittsburgh game, although they were playing with a big lead. They didn't have to throw the ball a ton. But last week in a game that was a shootout against Buffalo, you know, Tyreek smashed and he got 13 targets. I think we could see a similar type of performance this week against Cincinnati in a game that should be really high scoring. Um, I really like Tyreek Hill at 7K. Really like Jamar Chase as well. I think Jamar Chase, you know, his ceiling at 6,700. Like he stands out as a strong play too. Like he's going to get a ton of volume, always has big play upside. Obviously, if you know, back in week 17 when these teams played, like Jamar Chase had one of the most absurd games I've ever seen. 11 catches for 266 yards and three touchdowns against this Chiefs defense, 58 DraftKings points. Um, you know, Chase has shown just massive upside this season. The volume's been there on a weekly basis as well. You know, if we're expecting a, a shootout here, if we're expecting maybe the Bengals to be playing from behind, maybe this is one of those games where Joe Burrow has to throw the ball like 45 times. I mean, that could lead to 12, 13, 14 targets for Jamar Chase. And it's 6,700. Really, really like Jamar Chase. I think him and Tyreek Hill are probably my two favorite plays at wide receiver this week. 
you obviously can't go wrong with Cooper Cup or Debo Samuel, but I do really like both Tyreek and Jamar Chase. Um, I think, you know, some of these other guys in the mid-range are viable. T. Higgins at 5,700 do have a good amount of interest in. You know, he kind of established himself as the wide receiver two for the Bengals. Might not get as much volume as Jamar Chase, but, you know, he's going to be on the field for, what, 80, 90% of the snaps. Um, he's going to probably see eight, nine, 10 targets. 5,700, like I think T. Higgins is firmly in play. Odell is a fine option as well. Um, Odell's target volume hasn't been as good. Like we haven't seen the, the 10, 11, 12 target game from Odell yet. Uh, but they've been involving him a lot like in the red zone. I know um, in that game against Arizona, they threw him a fade to the goal line to get him a touchdown. It seems like they want to feed Odell the ball. They want to get him oppor you know, opportunities to score. Um, at 5,100, like Odell in tournaments, I think it is fine. Um, we haven't seen a ceiling from Odell, but I think that ceiling is always there, even though if he is, you know, or even though he is competing with, you know, Cooper Cup for targets. Still think Odell's viable. Brendan Ayuk, I'm a, a little hesitant on at 5K. Um, we know Ayuk's going to be on the field for you know a large majority of the snaps, 80, 90% of the snaps. The only issue I have with Ayuk and just these other 49ers pass catchers is that we've just seen Jimmy G be so bad, and the 49ers just really want to establish the run that you know the ceiling on guys like Brendan Ayuk and George Kittle, like it's definitely not. I think the ceiling is still there, but the floor is really low. I mean, freaking Brendan Ayuk had zero drafting points last week. He literally got one target. That's the issue with these 49ers receivers, um, Kittle, Ayuk, not really Debo Samuel, but definitely Kittle and Ayuk. Like, the floor on those guys is still low just because, you know, Jimmy G just hasn't shown the consistency. The 49ers want to run the ball a ton. But I think there is still, like, it's still a ceiling for Ayuk, especially since he will be on the field for a large majority of the snaps. Um, and if by some chance, you know, the 49ers do get behind in this game, maybe we do see, you know, more pass attempts and potentially more targets for Ayuk. I think he's a fine play at 5K. If we're looking for value plays, Brent, uh, Byron Pringle, I do actually like for a value option. He's been, you know, kind of, or he's kind of established himself as the wide receiver two for the Chiefs. And really just like the last, I want to say like four or five weeks, he's been their wide receiver two. In terms of playing time, he's been playing like second most snaps behind Tyreek. Uh, last week in the or in the divisional round game, 76% of the snaps for Byron Pringle. He's played at least 70% of the snaps in two of their last three games. I mean, I think at 4,300, if we're going to get Byron Pringle, you know, playing 70, 80% of the snaps, probably see seven to eight targets playing in one of the best offenses in the league. You know, right now this Chiefs team, like they have like a 30 implied team total. I mean, Vegas is expecting him to score at least four touchdowns here. I think Byron Pringle at 4,300 is a really good value play. I like him quite a bit if you're looking for a cheap option. I think Tyler Boyd is fine as well at 4,200. You know, he's going to play out of the slot, probably see, you know, maybe five to six targets. He's been a little inconsistent this year, but, you know, 4,200 in a game that has a lot of shootout potential. I think Tyler Boyd obviously makes sense as a cheaper option. Um, and then if we're looking for some other values, I think, you know, dart throws, guys like McCole Harmon and Van Jefferson are definitely in play. Van Jefferson was really good for those few games after Robert Woods got injured. Ever since then, like these last two or three games, he's been really, you know, he's not been great. I mean, the targets have not been that good. Three, one, and three targets over his last three games. Now, Van Jefferson always does offer like big play upside. Um, he's always a threat to catch a long touchdown. Like at 3,900, I think this is the kind of guy like on a two-game slate, I'd be fine taking a shot on Van Jefferson just because we have seen him break off long touchdown catches. Um, he should still be on the field for a good amount of stats. Now, I think you know Odell has clearly established himself as the wide receiver two for the Rams. He's been playing way ahead of Van Jefferson, but still think Van Jefferson at 3,900 as a dart throw in GPPs does make some sense. If you're playing large field tournaments and you're trying to get different, I think going to guys like McCall Hardman, Van Jefferson does make some sense because I don't think these guys really get much ownership. Um, if I'm going cheaper receiver, you know, those are guys that are in play for me. Obviously, really like Pringle. I think Boyd's fine as well. And that's probably it for the wide receiver position. So I think we can go ahead and talk about tight end real quick before we do end the video. So, you know, tight end, I think it's pretty straightforward. If you can find a way to pay up for Kelsey or Kittle, like I think Kelsey and Kittle are definitely the two tight ends you probably want to be playing. These are the guys that have the most upside. You know, these are the guys that can put up 30, 40 draftings points any week. You know, Kelsey, he's been good. I mean, he's, the targets have been there. He's always, you know, going to get volume. He's always a threat to score a touchdown. I mean, he's one of the best tight ends in the league. It's a two-game slate. Like, obviously, Travis Kelsey is a really good play here. He's only 6,500, too. Like, it's not like you're having to pay, you know, over 7K or almost 8K for Kelsey. Like, I think Kelsey should be pre pretty easy to get in. I do like the savings dropping down from Kelsey to Kittle. Now, the issue with George Kittle is kind of the same with Brandon Ayuk, like we talked about. Like, Kittle... We've just seen a lot of games this year where Kittle only gets two, three targets. Now, obviously, Kittle can put up a massive game any week. You know, he had a massive game against Seattle, got 15 targets that week against Cincinnati. He's always a threat to have those type of games, but you know, there's definitely some games where Kittle will get you two, three, four fancy points just because they use him a lot as a blocker. They don't throw the ball much. 
in a scenario though where the you know the 49ers do have to throw the ball more and they're you know playing from behind we could see you know eight nine ten tar- targets for George Kittle George Kittle is still one of the best tight ends in the league in my opinion even though he hasn't been used as much lately as I would like he still has that upside and at 5k I think if you can't get up to Kelsey I mean Kittle is a pretty strong option that has just as much upside as, as Kelsey his floor is obviously way lower but I think the ceiling for Kittle is just as high as Kelsey so Definitely like Kittle at tight end. Um, if you can't pay up for, for Kelsey, I think he's a really good option. If you're going cheap and you want to punt, you have guys like Higby and Uzama that aren't very expensive. I mean, Higby's only 3700 Like, I think Higby as a value play makes some sense. Now, Higby, Higby doesn't really have much of a ceiling. In order for him to put up a big ceiling game, he's probably going to have to score multiple touchdowns. He's very unlikely to you know get like 100 receiving yards. But he's going to be on the field for pretty much almost every single snap. I'm pretty sure they've been using uh, Tyler Higby as like an every down tight end. He's been playing like 100% of the snaps lately. Um, yeah, last, let's see. Yeah, last week in the um, 10 Bay game, 97% of snaps, 100% of snaps the week before that. Like, So he's basically been like an every down tight end. I mean, at 3,700, getting a tight end that's going to play on probably every single snap. Obviously, Tyler Higby, if you're looking for a punt down or a pay, a pay down option, a punt play at tight end, he's probably my favorite play. I think I would prefer him over CJ Ozama. Uzama's fine as well. Um, he's probably going to get you know five, six, seven targets. I think I slightly lean Higby over Uzama, but if you know what you want to pay down, I think these guys are fine. I would try and pay up for Kittle or Kelsey if I could, uh, but obviously you know we can't pay up for everybody. You know we got to take a stand somewhere. If you're playing one lineup on this slate, you're going to have some tough decisions to make. You know, do you go a little bit cheaper at running back and maybe don't play up pay up for Mixon? Do you go a little bit cheaper and maybe don't pay up for Cup or? Tyreek or Chase and a receiver, like you're going to have some tough decisions to make. I think for me, you know, quarterback, I want to try and fit in Mahomes at running back. I think this is maybe the position you could pay down a little bit. Maybe you don't have to go up to Mixon. Maybe you could go like McKinnon and Akers as your two running backs. A receiver, if I can play like Tyreek, Jamar Chase, and then maybe a cheap option, that's probably the way I want to go. If I can fit Kelsey or Kittle at tight end, that's the way I want to go. But yeah, guys, I think that's really it for this uh, little two-game conference championship slate. I hope you guys you know, did enjoy this video. Really do appreciate you watching. Really excited for these two championship games. I mean, the the four divisional round games last week were amazing. I mean, that was those were four of the best football games I'd ever watched. Um, just in terms of you know, down to the wire, you know, really just like a, crazy games in general. They they were super, um, super tight, super down to the wire. I think every game ended with like a a field goal, a walk off field goal or walk off play. The Bengals game ended in a walk off field goal. The Rams game ended in a walk walk off field goal. The Chiefs game ended in a walk off touchdown. And then the other game, I can't even remember the other game, but I think it, it ended a walk-off field goal as well, the, the 49ers game. So, yeah, it's just been some crazy football lately. Hopefully these two games, you know, are up to par and are as good as those were. Um, but, yeah, guys, appreciate you watching the video. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Hit that subscribe button as well. Again, go check out the sponsor of the video, Prize Picks. If you have not yet, go sign up for Prize Picks. Use code NOAA when you do, and Prize Picks will give you a 100% match on your first deposit up to $100. You can take a look at Prospect's board for these two championship games. Take a look at all the props they have available. Potentially, you know, win up to 10 extra money over there. Have to make at least two picks, but you can make the, make up to five picks. You can win up to 10 extra money on Prospect. So go sign up. Use code NOAA. And you will get your first deposit matched up to $100. But that's it, guys. Wish you the best of luck on Sunday in, these two, in this two-game slate. Appreciate you watching. We'll see you in the next video. Peace.